Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is the promised video that um, I've decided to finally get around to doing for you. It's the um, pack rat book that if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen some images of it when I completed it. it must be over a week ago now, but uh, I haven't done the flip through yet because um, I have been trying to decide what to do on the pages and I'm, I'm still not there, but I've got a bit of a start and I thought it might be interesting. This book here too, by the way, I created following along with a um, tutorial from Nick the Booksmith. If you like it when you've seen it, um, get onto her channel and just put in Pack Rat Book and it will come up. It's a great video and it's quite easy to follow along with, which is good. Obviously, you have to, you know, watch it first. Get an idea of what you need and then go for it but this is what I came up with and um, I had a friend of a friend who dropped off boxes and boxes full of old books which was wonderful and I was able to uh, get some covers from those they were a bit you know dilapidated so they needed some new life put into them and uh, these this particular one that I chose is actually two back covers because I really didn't like the front cover. So this, I don't know what that was, um, this one is a bit more weathered than the front, the one I've decided to use on the front. But they're both back covers from a particular book. I just liked it because it had that, um, it's like a deboss, it's not embossed. So I'm not sure if that's the right word, but it's um, just kind of interesting texture on the covers, the back covers anyway. So. This is a uh, two back cover book um, that uh, I've used the covers for to create it in that way. So anyway, let's have a look. It's um, Mine's a little bit different to Nick's. I've used some contrasting fabric to create a pocket in the front and one in the back and you'll see that when we get there. But this is it and as a pack rat, um, pack rat book rather, I'm just using some things that really just going through my scrap boxes having so much extra time in the studio I've discovered that I really do have a way too much scrap so this is a good opportunity to use these this particular one is from you know those um, adult coloring books that you can get these are some pages that I didn't get to in those books that were a gift to me from somebody I can't even remember now sorry about that um, so they've just been tea stained and popped in the book and because the book covers that I chose to create this book from are so big I needed some sort of taller pages because this is the normal size that I work with so as you can see it's a quite small and this is just your photocopy paper. Uh, the covers themselves just before we get too far into it I will measure for you. So in inches the actual covers just under 10 inches or 25 centimeters high and the width is 16 centimeters or just around about six and a half inches and the the style of uh, book to make will add a little quarter inch all the way around I think about that so yes, this is just a coordinating fabric. I created a pocket for the front and a giant tag. As I said, because the, the um, book is so much taller than I would normally use. But that means that you can use bigger pieces as in these ones here, which is kind of good. I don't have to, you know, chop them down to fit them into other books. But that's why this one is in here. And just some, as I said, normal tea stained photocopy paper and just off cuts from other journals that I've made and sort of chucked into the scrap box turned them into pockets on different things that's not attached yet I don't know why that's in there and might just be trying it on for size now um, this was inside the books that I pulled apart to get the covers from I don't know if it's a glassine or what it is, but it's aged quite naturally, I guess. And um, it was just on covering book plates, like illustrations or, you know, that sort of thing. I'd better make sure I'm staying in the, in the frame. 
So um, things that I've done to pages, which is a just a tea stained dictionary page, and I've put some dress pattern tissue over the top of that. This particular one is just graph paper, tea stained again. And this has tissue paper over the top, but it's from my favourite um, cosmetic slash skincare store in Melbourne called Mecca. And uh, you can see here, that's their name there, M-E-C-C-A, -C -C -A, Mecca. Um, and their tissue, like their sort of promotional stuff is really quite interesting. So I keep a lot of it and now I'm going to use it in this type of book. Now this one here uh, is the back of a envelope, just like a DL or a business envelope with a window on it that I've just attached a file card to and popped on a, it's not stuck down yet, the majority of the things that are in this book are just paper clipped in because I'm not sure if I want to let these live here permanently or, or this particular spot rather they might go a bit further into the book or whatever but yeah so that's just the other side of the envelope flap that you would put over but I extended it to turn it into like a type of a page I guess and again this is also made from scrap from a book page just folded over and uh, decorated um, and to create a tag spot, I suppose, or a little pocket. And that might just get put stuck in there properly and stitched around. And I've seen a lot of artists at the moment doing this on their YouTube channels. Uh, like Roxy from... Sorry, Rachel from Roxy Creations. And also, I think Tracy Fox is doing some interesting scrapbusting, mass-making videos. They're always good to watch. Um, when you're down that rabbit hole. <laughs> so that one is also just tea stained. This particular paper here is a draw liner that I've had for a long time and not used. So I thought, oh, well, I will pop those into the signatures as well after I tea stained them. And they come out quite well with the tea. And that's just the rest of it. Oh, this is the envelope with the window on it. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. It will have to be decorated, of course. The tea staining, I don't know if it was the paper, the blue on the inside has sort of tinted it blue, which probably is possibly what happened. So there's that. Um, that's the other side of that Mecca tissue, which I really love. Dress pattern and that other thing there. The other half of that, it's a ledger, ledger paper that I folded over and turned it into, I've just stitched around for a pocket. Um, also, because the book is so high or, you know, tall, I uh, am sort of struggling to find things that I have in my collection to use. So I've started making envelopes or pockets to, to size so I can include them in the book with other, other scrap, turning it into a tag or whatever. So that's, uh, that's the first signature. Everything in the signatures is not exactly identical, but there's always, you know, that in there, some more of the um, colouring book things. Now this one here, I cut a window in the front of the uh, pocket before I folded it up and finished it. Uh, this particular one has a frame around it because during the cutting I was a bit... Um, off so it sort of didn't really look that great so I created a frame to cover it and uh, it's a very basic thing in there that will need some more attention perhaps and that will probably go in there another envelope I've seen a lot of artists also um, seal these and cut across the top to create a deeper uh, pocket to put things in which is probably not a bad idea for a book of this size. Now this page here is like the cover of a music uh, book that I covered with tissue on this side and I'm not sure if this is Seven Gypsies or if it's one of Tim Holtz's tissue, can't remember, it's been in my studio for a long time. 
and on the inside I'm not sure if you can see this here this is also some mecha tissue but when I say but it was upside down compared to this side or the way I put it in this was upside down so it's got a big thing stuck on top here to sort of cover that I mean you can see a few letters poking out here and there but it was so obviously upside down that I thought oops I'm not going to pull the book apart again to turn it around and then you know this one here could look a bit odd because a lot of the numbers on this one are facing this way so anyway we'll see how it goes and so there's a little not just a very quick large-ish collage with a suitcase on the bottom that I've turned it into a pocket and popped in a little tag there more draw liner and photocopy paper that has been tea stained that has been around for a while and another piece of that I don't know what it is it could be like a glycine perhaps not sure exactly but that's in nearly every one of the signatures as well and <clears throat> that will be decorated at some point with things that I've made from scrap I hope I have in, well, I'm sure I've got heaps of scrap to turn into a few journals, but um, just finding the right thing to put in them, I guess. This one here is the other side of that piece, upside down piece, that I created a large-ish uh, pocket for a tag. Um, putting birds on that because I put a nest on the front here, but anyway... That's all just done with tissue paper and, you know, layers of different things and then tea stained and stamped. So that's that one. Again, the other side of an envelope with a postcard attached to it and a little pocket here to put something in once I create something. But again, uh, paper clipped on because might not live there. We'll see as we go. Again, this is um, the colouring colouring in book page. And I um, created this one as well, but cut an oval or a shape. I've done a few with different ovals, different sizes, or just a square window. Um, so you could see what was inside. And that's just a very basic monotone tag in there. Um, what's that? The other side of the ledger envelope or ledger pocket rather and then we're on to the next one now these are just off cuts from other projects so rather than add them to the scrap box i thought i would just use them as a signature wrap in this now this one here has got the square cut out because it was in a plain um see if i've still got it here maybe not uh covered it was all covered and i thought well there's no point putting a pretty tag inside something that you can't see so, <clears throat> pardon me, that one got an envelope, a window cut out of it and put back in. So that's good, that's the other side of the envelope. And on this in this particular one, I've got just a cloth tag that uh, has just been attached to some card. So it has a bit more um, sturdiness. And I thought that little birdie looked kind of cute poking through there. So we'll see if that stays too, I'm not sure. Another ledger pocket. And more. Oh, this is another piece of the tissue from Mecca. And another piece from the plate cover in the book. Some lines to write in. See what I mean by this? It's really, I don't know, I really like it. It's kind of interesting. And that'll be nice with something over it as well. It's better than looking at a blank page and thinking, what am I going to put there when it's already got something on it anyway. The other half of that. And these are just um, some tea stained card that I had uh, in the scrap box as well that I will turn into tags. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm losing my voice today. I'll just have a drink of water. Thanks. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so again, stitched a file card to that with another little envelope there to put something in. And here is a, another pockety tag thing. That is, uh, the I really liked the paper. It was from a 
um, I think it's a dictionary from a um, set of encyclopedias. So it's very big, heavy book. But the first few pages, or first 20 or so pages, are in this colour. And I, I thought, well, I really like that colour. I don't have to tea stain it. And it's kind of goes with what I want. So I've ripped them a lot of those out and turned them into these window pockets or envelopes or baggies or whatever you want to call them. Here's another one that's had a window cut out for the pretty bird in there that I think I think I got this bird also from Roxy Creations in her Etsy shop. She's got some really nice um, printables. So you should go over and have a look. There's lots of birds in this book, even though a pack rat book really doesn't have a theme other than using your things you've been saving or, you know, getting through your scrap box. This particular one was, I think, oh yes, it's a um, tea-stained dictionary page that I collaged on one side of and then covered it with some dress pattern paper to sort of tie it all in together and that's given it a bit more guts as well. More tea-stained. So hopefully when I get through some of the scrap, I'll have some different embellishments to put in here another page of that stuff. I think it's glycine or a type of tracing maybe. Um, some more lines to write on. Another pocket. And uh, sorry my daughter sounds like she's coming out. I'm just going to let her know I'm filming. Um, yeah, she wasn't that happy about it, but bad luck. Um, so there's that as well, which is the back of the other collaged one that I had done. Um, and some more draw liner. And the back of the envelope here too. Same again, file card, pocket. Now here is one of the pockets, the original pockets that I made. And if you put in a beautiful, you know, tag with a lovely bird on it, you're not going to see it unless you take it out. So I thought I would um, give them a window to look out of and use these further into the book with something a little more plain perhaps or even just like a journal card or something in there to write on. Uh, journal, um, sorry, signature cover. And this one here is the same again. So just a scrap of um, scrapbook paper. A colouring book page and this is the draw liner again but it was much much longer than I was anticipating so I folded it up and turned it in and had a pocket you know turned it into a pocket up there I just popped in some tags this particular tag was taken from a um a uh, what's the word collage master board that I made so I've, I've made a couple of those and just cut them up just nice and quick to turn into tags that look, you know, a bit more interesting than plain, um, you know, just plain manila type card. I'm just sorry, I was a bit distracted then. Neighbor, neighborhood kids are screaming in the backyard, as per usual. Now this here is also a mecca tissue. I don't know if you can see it well enough there. I'll just stand up and look. It's um, white tissue. I put it over music. But you can see it's got gold like splattered on it. I don't know if you can see it nicely on that. Oh yes, that's all right. Um, yeah, which is also a really nice one. I'm glad I saved that too from orders and packaging and things. And here is another. Put a much bigger oval on this on the front of this one because there was a lot more going on on that tag that I didn't want to hide. Here's a piece of paper that I made in another class last year, which I really enjoyed and loved the paper, so I thought I would include that in here. And just some vellum. This particular signature doesn't have the glycine because I put vellum in. Seems silly to have two similar. I mean, mind you, the majority of the papers in here are similar. So it will be interesting, I guess, once it's all filled up or used in some way which I'm looking forward to doing because I'd really like to get through some scrap. 
and that's what that other um, tissue looks like with the bigger print on it. So that was all upside down on, you know, further in. That's why, the, <clears throat> why I covered it quite a lot with um, more bits that go in. Um, again, postcard with a little envelope on it on the back of the envelope flap. And that's the other side of the drawer liner. I've just popped a little cluster here on on top as a decoration because that's where the um, the name of the pa the company that did the paper, the draw liners, was. So I thought oh, I'll just cover that up with something there it, because it was quite, you know, focal. I thought, oh, well, doesn't no one needs to see that, and I I will probably decorate down here a bit more too. So there you go, I think this is the last, yes it is the last signature, there you go, and here I've created, I've put on another pocket on the back of the book, or back cover inside, and that is also just come off one of the collage masterboards that I created, just cut that out with a little tab on that side, so it can sit in here quite nice. I think that will just end up living in here, I'm not sure if I'm going to put anything more on it. But um, that can live there quite happily. There you go. Hopefully I stayed on screen this time. This is my second video of doing this. Um, I did one yesterday and then watched it this morning and thought, whoops, I migrated off the whole thing here. You wouldn't have even seen it. Okay, so this is the pack wrap book. And this printout here with the name on it uh, is also one of Nick's downloads which is handy because I'm not super good on the computer when it comes to you know graphics and that sort of thing it's just easy to print them out and that's been tea stained as well and popped in there and these are just some of the threads that I haven't cut off yet from stitching stitching the signatures in because I thought I might go back in thread them up again go back in and uh, put some beads along the spine as well if I can find some that I like so anyway, that is the pack rat book. I hope you liked it. It was uh, good to make. Um, and it is a good way of using up some things you've been hanging on to for too long, getting rid of some scrap and um, using it properly rather than getting rid of it rather. Now the lawnmower started next door too. Awesome. Sorry about all the noise. Okay, I'll talk to you again. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.